It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. We talked about Fremantle there. Do you think there is a clear top three? Or do you think that is fair to say? Yeah, because I, I did my tiers as I alluded to. I had a top tier, which was Melbourne, Brisbane, Fremantle. Yeah. I put Freo in there. I would agree with that. Uh, purely because, you know, I mean, in terms of top quality football, we'll talk about the teams below soon, but I think there's been, you know, really good signs from both Carlton and Sydney and yep. at times St Kilda in terms of their top level of brand, but they, they falter a lot more than, than a Fremantle. Yeah. And, and that's for me, it's, like, it's not just that Fremantle have um, you know beaten the teams away, it's that they've been more consistent. Other than, obviously, yeah. a bad loss in the Gold Coast, Collingwood got them done here in the wet. Their record speaks for itself. They have been more consistent and, and, and are clearly the better yeah. team, in my opinion. And the thing is, the thing I feel that distinguishes Freo from those other teams is we are the number one defence in the league. Mm. We, mm. Like, we have a benchmark, we have a brand that sort of stuck more consistently as you said for yeah. those other teams that are sort of like Carlton I know is a big clearance stoppage mm-hmm. type team and that sort of fluctuates for their game style totally. whereas our brand is very consistent and yeah the, the Carlton yeah. brand doesn't even to be sustainable for four quarters yeah. <laughs> let alone you know like the whole season so we'll see because that, that I genuinely think the best football from Carlton this year has been like grand final worthy yep. but it's obviously that in that same game, they'll have a quarter where they don't even look like yeah. finalists. So uh, that's the question mark for me, whereas Fremantle yeah. look a little bit more stable. Yep. I think that's, and that's have depth as well. Yeah. Like Whereas I don't think every time Carlton has an out, they're bringing in similar quality in, mm. whereas we have that luxury at the moment, yeah. generally, unless it's like someone top shelf that goes out. So how many teams did you have in the next tier? Four as well? So the, yeah, so I've gone with, in no particular order, the Cats, the yep. Saints, the Swans, and the blues. That's my four as well. Yeah. And the top, I, my top four tiers, what I yeah. call it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that that is the team as it sits. Sorry, the four teams that all in real in real all reality could push for that fourth spot because at different times they've all faltered yep. and are leaving the door open a little bit. And at times they've certainly all shown the quality of the top four teams. A hundred percent. And this is this is the other question. How would you rank those four teams in order? <sighs> Ooh, in I'm... terms of premiership capability. In terms of a flag, I'd they've probably... All, they've all got an argument for them, and they've all got an argument... They've all got, like, vulnerabilities. I'd probably have to pick Geelong number one just because they've got so many runs on the board doing mm. it. They've got Hawkins and Jez Cameron in their forward line yeah, with great support for those guys as well, so plenty of avenues to score. Midfield's still pretty good. It's not as good as it has been in the past, but their back line with Tom Stewart just holds up pretty well. I agree. I, I, but the thing is with the Cats is out of this four... These four teams, they've arguably impressed impress me the least. Yeah, that, ironically, it's, it's just weird. the most stable yeah. group and the the team have proven. And you know they have that sort of inconsistency, yeah. year to year, round around even. Yeah, so they are equally like uh, for me personally. I think Geelong are more likely to finish seventh than they are fourth. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So that that's I, I kind of pegged them a little bit lower. The Saints have probably been one of the more stable teams. They they've, they probably take fourth for me on part of rankings. Uh, only because, I mean, they beat the Cats for a start. Carlton have beaten the Swans yep. in this little dynamic, but lost to some average teams and been ultimately far too inconsistent for me to be confident about them really uh. contending while acknowledging that their best football is arguably the best of the four there. Uh. Would you agree with that? i probably have to say Sydney's probably my pick to be fourth. Because okay. I think, because with the win on Melbourne as well, mm. like that's just a win some of those other teams might not get now that Melbourne have had the proverbial boot put up them and mm. they'll come out and not drop too many more of those sort of games, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one. I don't think there's a clear answer. I mean, Carlton beat Sydney, admittedly, in Melbourne. So trying to form a ranking around those teams yeah. is hard because I, I think Sydney have been at times vulnerable yeah. themselves. Like In terms of most likely to win a flag, ironically, I'd probably have Sydney as the lowest of the four. Yeah? What makes you say that? Kind of just like... Well, they do have experience, but a lot of like inexperience as well. Mm. Like Lost their final last yeah. year. They Some of their like 16 to 22 type guys, I'm not as sort of convinced in compared to like Saints or mm. Carlton. And the top end of Carlton and, well, Carlton more so than St Kilda feels like it's 
got more to take them over the line than Sydney's top end. I think, though, if we're talking about chances to win a flag, if Carlton hit their top brand in September, I think they can make the grand final. Yeah, I'd agree I with that, know unfortunately. If I, I, I think, for me personally, Sydney's just behind them. Mm. Yeah, I'm sort of... In terms of what, come finals, it's like I rank them entirely differently yeah. to how I rank how they yeah. finish out the season. That's but, why I sort of said Geelong mm. was my favourite to win the flag, even if they do finish seventh on the ladder, which is quite likely. Mm. I think they've got the experience and top-end talent to mm. cause the most damage if they're playing at their peak. Yeah, and again, we, we haven't really touched on the Saints here too much, but they're, they're with Geelong in terms of they've a bit more stable. I don't mm. think their results have been too concerning. They lost to Port in a, in a game that was just terrible conditions. Other than that, they've ticked most boxes. Be, beat Fremantle and Perth. Yeah, that was a good win. So, uh, yeah, I, I, so they beat the Cats as well. I don't recall them playing Carlton or Sydney yet. Yeah, I think they've had the easiest run of the yeah of that group for sure. That's true. But I, I guess, in, yeah, I don't even know what conclusion we just came to. Then I, I think Carlton, for me, the most likely to shock and go deep in mm. September. But as I said, it's messy and I don't, only yeah. time will tell. So if you had to pick a fourth spot. Pick someone to make fourth, Sydney. Sydney. Yep. Okay. I'll say Carlton. Ooh. Spicy. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what I'm talking about. 